the eagerly awaited launch date for the Starship IFT-3 flight has finally been confirmed, sparking curiosity about the potential outcomes of this upcoming mission. With a myriad of updates implemented over the past few months, significant changes are anticipated. Booster B-10, a crucial component of the flight's initial stages, has undergone substantial upgrades that have the potential to reshape the outcome of this mission. But what exactly are these upgrades, and how might they impact the success rate of the flight? These are the questions that we'll explore in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Join us as we delve into the intricacies of Booster B-10 and the implications of SpaceX's latest advancements. Just a few days ago, SpaceX unveiled the flight timeline for IFT-3, revealing that while S-28's tasks have been modified, the process involving Booster remains unchanged from IFT-2. Recall the remarkable performance of Booster B-9 during the initial phases of the IFT-2 flight. The synchronized operation of 33 engines generated an unprecedented thrust, surpassing even the legendary Saturn V rocket. Furthermore, the flawless execution of the separation mechanism, employing hot staging, facilitated the successful separation of the two stages. However, despite this impressive start, the mission encountered subsequent challenges. Following separation, certain engines failed to restart, leading to a cascade of shutdowns among the remaining engines. Ultimately, Booster met its demise as it succumbed to an explosion, abruptly terminating the mission. Numerous factors have been identified as contributing to the mishap, with fuel sloshing emerging as the primary culprit. In a previous episode, we delved into this phenomenon in detail, providing a clearer understanding. However, let's briefly revisit this issue. During the booster's flight, its speed vector naturally aligned with the direction of travel. However, when most engines were shut down for separation, the booster decelerated. With the activation of the hot staging mechanism, the ship's engines ignited while still attached to the booster, generating thrust opposite to the booster's original motion. This sudden change in direction created inertia, causing the remaining fuel within the booster to slosh violently, disrupting the fuel supply lines connected to the engines. Subsequently, the booster's engines reignited to regain speed, propelling the booster in the opposite direction of the sloshed fuel. This constant reversal of forces led to repeated impacts between the fuel and the internal supply line structure. Despite the relatively low remaining fuel percentage, which was at around 10%, its substantial mass, approximately 340 tons, exerted significant pressure on the internal structures. Moreover, the impact from the ship further agitated the fuel, creating air bubbles that infiltrated the fuel supply lines, subsequently causing engine malfunctions. It's essential to recognize the significance of these factors as they illustrate the intricate interplay between various elements during the flight sequence underscoring the need for meticulous attention to detail in future missions. The crucial question arises, how has SpaceX upgraded its systems to mitigate this phenomenon? After months of rigorous testing and refinement, it appears that SpaceX has addressed this challenge by implementing a new system. Upon inspecting the external structure of Booster B-10, observers noticed new welds on the aft section, suggesting the addition of internal components. Many speculate that these additions are slosh baffles designed to counteract fuel sloshing during separation. Recent simulations by Ryan Hansen Space has provided insight into the new baffles structure. These meticulous images depict a redesigned baffle system indicating a departure from the previous, less effective design. The new system features two stages, one positioned near the remaining fuel level at separation and another above it, mirroring the distance between the lower stages and the bottom of the fuel tank. This redesigned system aims to minimize fuel sloshing and reduce the generation of air bubbles, thus mitigating the impact on other components and the fuel supply line. By incorporating small holes into the baffles, SpaceX aims to achieve a clearer fuel movement pattern free from excessive air bubbles. While it remains uncertain whether this design has been implemented in Booster B-10, if true, it holds promise for resolving the fuel sloshing issue encountered during the previous flight. This upgrade underscores SpaceX's commitment to continuous improvement and innovation in spaceflight technology. In addition, it's worth noting the adjustments made to the flight timeline. Although the sequence of steps for the booster in the IFT-3 flight remains unchanged, there are alterations in timing. Notably, the entire operating time for the booster will now span 7 minutes and 4 seconds compared to the previous duration of 6 minutes and 48. Several factors contribute to this extension. Firstly, the engine cutoff process, or 
booster main engine cutoff will occur three seconds later than in the previous flight, delaying the onset of the hot staging process. Furthermore, the duration from hot staging to the start of the booster boost back burn is slightly shorter by less than one second compared to IFT2. Lastly, the interval between the shutdown of the booster boost back burn and the booster entering the transonic state is longer than in the previous flight. These adjustments in timing are crucial for optimizing the performance of the flight and ensuring the smooth execution of each stage of the mission. The rationale behind these changes remains unclear, but we can offer a few predictions. The extended time from Max-Q to booster MECO might be aimed at allowing the booster to decelerate before shutting off the engine. This deceleration could significantly mitigate the abrupt movement of fuel, addressing the fuel sloshing issue highlighted earlier. Reducing the time between hot staging and the booster boost back burn startup could be an effort to minimize the duration during which the booster operates at low thrust with only three inner gimbal motors. Swift engine reactivation may enhance SpaceX's control over the booster. The elongation of the time between the booster boost back burn shutdown and the booster landing burn startup suggests that the booster's flight process might be intentionally slower, resulting in an overall longer flight time. This adjustment could provide SpaceX with more time to control the booster before initiating the final landing sequence into the ocean. These predictions are speculative, and the actual reasons for the timing adjustments will only become apparent after the flight. Feel free to share your thoughts and comments in the comments section down below. Indeed, the noticeable changes implemented on the booster for the upcoming flight, coupled with the advancements in Ship 28, are poised to make significant contributions to the success of Starship IFT-3. Elon Musk's mention of a 20% success rate increase underscores the confidence in these enhancements. It's a testament to SpaceX's continuous efforts to refine and improve its technology, setting the stage for a more successful and reliable spaceflight program. The anticipation surrounding Starship IFT-3 is palpable within the aerospace community, as its success could herald a significant turning point in aerospace history. Should this flight prove successful, SpaceX will establish a solid foundation for pursuing new milestones milestones throughout the year, potentially conducting four, five, or even nine flights, surpassing their achievements from the previous year. The successful completion of the refueling process from the header tank to the main will instill confidence in SpaceX's ability to develop crucial systems, particularly for the crewed moon landing mission Artemis 3. Moreover, this success will likely accelerate the production of the human landing system Starship variant, a long-term objective for SpaceX. Furthermore, achieving orbit with the Starship IFT-3 mission will mark a significant step towards SpaceX's ultimate goal, Mars. This milestone represents the culmination of decades of ambition and innovation, propelling humanity closer to the possibility of interplanetary exploration and colonization. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX. And until next time, keep looking up.